We want to crack this message, number 459, from the public message board at CryptoClub.org. We know it was encrypted using an affine cipher, but we don't know the key. There are three ways to approach cracking an affine cipher. First, look at frequencies and word patterns to determine a few letters and words. With luck, we can crack the entire message this way. But we only need to find the encryption of two different letters to use algebra to find the multiplicative and additive keys. Then decrypt the rest of the message using these keys. A third way is to look for patterns in the cipher table. We know how to construct an affine cipher table using the multiplicative and additive keys. So let's see how this method works. Here's our message on the crack substitution tool. We'll be looking for number patterns, so let's set the cipher table to show the numbers as well as the letters. To get started cracking, first look at the frequencies. We notice that Z is by far the most common letter in the message, so it makes sense to set Z to E. Now look at that first word with the apostrophe. I'm betting that that's the word I've, and I'm just going to enter it. I glance over the message to make sure that makes sense all the way through. And I notice some other things. I have another one-letter word down here, and since I've already used I, I'm betting this one is A. So I enter that. Finally, I'm going to look down at this word, V, I, E and finish it off with a W. Now let's switch our attention to the cipher table. I know that to proceed left to right in the cipher numbers, I must add the multiplicative key each time. But here we have 6 followed by 11. The multiplicative key must be 5. And now I can proceed to fill in the rest of the table by adding 5 as I go across. 11 plus 5 is 16, 16 plus 5 is 21, 21 plus 5 is 26, and I know I have to reduce that to 0. Then I skip to the beginning of the table. 5 plus 5 is 10, 10 plus 5 is 15, and 15 plus 5 is 20. Now I get to 30, which reduces to 4. I'm going to fill in the rest of the table, and you can yourself confirm that it's right. Now I can read the message from the message box. I've always felt that a person's intelligence is directly reflected by the number of conflicting points of view he can entertain simultaneously on the same topic. And this quote comes to us from Abigail Adams. And an apt message for us today, because while these methods are not necessarily conflicting points of view, it does help if we can entertain them simultaneously to help crack an affine cipher.